wrestling fans, thanks for clicking the Dreaded D Rose report. My man boobs aren't showing, are they? Uh, as uh, noted earlier this week, WWE officials were in a panic over Brock Lesnar versus uh, Triple H storyline and were considering having the match take place at June's No Way Out pay-per-view. Well, in an update. They are now considering it for No Way Out in July's Money in the Bank pay-per-view. So the match was originally planned for SummerSlam in August. So... <laughs> Anyway, here's what's going on. Uh, moving the match up would extend their time period between Lesnar's appearances on WWE TV this uh, year, since it's believed that only have him around for about 24 dates this year. Uh, of course, I'm not talking about 2013. Uh, but anyway, 24 times, and the uh, rest of the dates is going to be used next year for WrestleMania season, building that up. Uh, the main reason for keeping Lesnar out of, um, at least till SummerSlam, was uh, because they had already burnt out five dates between WrestleMania and Extreme Rules. So that's about a, what, a quarter of them or of the dates already gone. So hence the reason we need uh, Paul Heyman. So that's to keep the storyline going, to keep the Lesnar deal going, to keep the Triple H and everything going without Lesnar being there. So we got Trip, uh, uh, Heyman being the mouthpiece, talking as if he was Brock and keeping the storyline just really interesting where we can't do without it. And as noted earlier, uh, Scott Steiner, he was accused, uh, been accusing Hogan and Bischoff of having their lawyers contact him about recent war of words that they've had on Twitter. Hogan says those were TNA's lawyers that contacted Steiner. Uh, Hogan wrote on Twitter, he says, tried to, tried to be cool not only a clown but also a liar uh, those weren't my uh, lawyers they were TNA lawyers well I guess it's time to call my guys in he said I really hope uh, he could uh, save us money or uh, uh, he's got uh, maybe tons from independent shows he's been working but it's gonna be an expensive one maybe uh, he's smart enough to at least figure out when it starts uh, getting real what a shame and what a waste of a great talent but you can't tell an idiot uh, that they're an idiot. I disagree. You silly ass. Anyway, uh, it's really sad when you really thought someone was cool. Triple, or rather, uh, Hulk Hogan wrote all that about Steiner. And they've been, I don't know whether Steiner been drinking or what it was, but they went off weird directions with this. Can't go into it right now. Hey, you can probably look it up. It's still on some Twitter accounts somewhere or on websites. Big Show's currently now. I thought the sucker was fired. Big Show's currently being advertised for WWE's upcoming tour in Mexico and for all SmackDown tapings and live events after June 2nd. Boy, am I pissed. Am I red in the face by believing that? Hey, here's what I think is going to happen at um, the next pay-per-view. I got a feeling now, Larry, as we've seen on Raw, if any wrestler, whoever, I don't care who it is, interferes in the match with uh, uh, Laronitis versus uh, Triple H, uh, rather uh, Cena, if anybody, they're going to get fired. They're going to be terminated. If John Laronitis loses the match with Cena, he's going to be terminated. So I see he's not going to be terminated, I can tell you that. So I can see. Cena losing, Laronitis winning. Now, how that's going to happen, because he's not a better wrestler than Cena, what's going to happen, good old Big Show's going to show up and start just beating the crap and out of uh, Laronitis and beat the crap out of him, interfering in Cena's match, which makes Cena lose the match, Laronitis win the match, and you can't fire a guy that's already been fired. I think that's what's going to happen. I haven't read nothing, don't know nothing, but I just suspect. And by the way, we noted yesterday that Mark Henry had surgery. No word yet on Henry's uh, procedure, but uh, he's not being advertised for any of the main events, uh, or rather, any of the events for Raw till uh, about June 25th. Magnus stated on Twitter Tuesday that he landed a theater acting role. Well, he said, I just got the green light. I'll be playing the genie in the Aladdin at Christmas at Norwich Theater Royal. Yep. Wrestler doing panto. Can't believe uh, 
he's going to be a genie. Alright. For some reason, the message has already been deleted. Hey, uh, happy birthday to former Freebird, Buddy Roberts. 67 years old and Hall of Famer Johnny Rise, 74 years old, former WWF Intercontinental Champion Charles Wright, 51 years old. Who's that? Hey, it's the Godfather. Former TNA wrestler Cody Deaner, remember him? 31 years old and former OVW and IWA MS uh, Women's Champion Mickey Knuckles, 28 years old. And just to throw this out, just to, <clears throat> it won't take long, just a little FYI. On this day in 2002, Wrestling World lost former ECW wrestler and XBW wrestler and world champion there, uh, Alex uh, Rizzo. You say, who's that, huh? It's Big Dick Dudley. He was only 34 years old. Rizzo, uh, he began wrestling for Johnny Roz back in the 80s, trained alongside Taz and Damian Demento. If you're anywhere close to an internet site, you'll probably see Demento on there going crazy. Used to. Uh, but early in his career, he spent uh, time in Puerto Rico wrestling and uh, East Coast as Alexander the Great before moving to ECW in 1994, shortly after they uh, seceded from uh, uh, the NWA. And uh, anyway, here is where he was given the name Big Dick Dudley persona and becoming the head of the Family Dudley wrestling family. Anyway, Rizzo, or Big Dick, he was involved in four automobile accidents, one of which broke his neck, leaving him on the sidelines for over a year and reportedly a painkiller addict. He never made another major wrestling appearance before being found dead in his apartment of an apparent kidney failure. Well, I hate hearing stuff like that about wrestlers, but... All right, Tara, by the way, I don't know, I'm sure you guys don't get this pornography, but Tara stated on Twitter that she is featured in the latest issue of Penthouse. It says Pornographic Magazine. Well, if you've seen Penthouse lately, it's... Ah, it's, not, it's beautiful women on there with beautiful bodies. There ain't nothing pornographic about it. But anyway, I don't know what she's doing in there, but she says, be sure to pick up the newest edition of Penthouse, see your favorite knockout Tara hubba hubba, she says. Uh, so the veteran grappler states uh, uh, multiple times during her uh, WWE tenure that uh, she would be, have gladly posed nude for penthouse uh, competitor Playboy had she had been asked. Well, you're being asked. How about it? Do it. Anyway, Lisa Marie Verone also stated uh, Tuesday that she was involved in a uh, with a undisclosed project which uh, will keep her away from Chicago, Illinois residents uh, for one month. Didn't say what it was. Just left us hanging. And probably the Penthouse Magazine do the same. Hey, new season of Shawn Michaels' McMillan River Adventures is going to be premiering on uh, January 26th, Tuesday, 11 p.m. 11.30 p.m. on the Outdoor Channel. WWE source... Uh, uh, when asked if Cena's divorce will likely be ugly or go away quietly, prediction is that it's going to get ugly and get ugly fast. Oh, I can't wait. I'll be on here for the full 15 minutes with this stuff. Oh, it may just ruin our opinion of Cena totally. You never know. Hey, WWE diva Caitlin, she's featuring the latest episode of WWE Super Toys. And on the way back from promoting WWE in Japan this past weekend, Alberto De Rio stopped off in Japan as if it was right on his way home uh, to take part in a press conference uh, announcing SmackDown's brand return to the Orient, uh, Oriental Sports Center in Shanghai, August 11th. WWE is going to be running Tokyo, Japan, uh, August 9th and 10th. Reports coming out of China suggest that WWE is considering doing regular tours in China. I think it's big money over there. For both, injured WWE star Ted DiBiase announced on Twitter that he and his wife welcomed the new baby boy yesterday at 4.17 p.m. Uh, Tate McKinley DiBiase, born healthy at 6.9 ounces. And you know who that makes a grandpa, don't you? 
All right, uh, we received, uh, there was some uh, incorrect information regarding the dark main event uh, at uh, SmackDown taping in Hershey. Uh, there was no CM Punk versus Chris Jericho dark match, and there was no Cena, Orton, Sheamus versus Kane, Ziggler, and Tensai match before the tapings began. Whoever said that is a liar! Dark match uh, after the tapings ended saw Sheamus defeat Daniel Bryan in a non-title match. Uzos and Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler was taped uh, for WWE Superstars. The May 12th edition of WWE Raw AM did a 0.4 rating. They were about 470,000 viewers and their ratings have been a little bit down here lately uh, on uh, Raw on Monday. CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan is advertised for the June 4th Raw show from Greenville, uh, North Carolina. C, uh, John Cena is scheduled to face Lord Tensai and John Laurinaitis in the handicap match on Raw Live event after Over the Limits. Hey, so that tells you uh, uh, Laurinaitis is still around. I don't know nothing, I just guess. Sheamus vs. Del Rio last man standing match are advertised for a SmackDown Live event after Sunday's pay-per-view and uh, WWE is going to be releasing new DVDs on Shawn Michaels, Orton, Mysterio, Kingston as a part of the Superstar Collection that launched later uh, uh, later this year. It's uh, I think the 995 thing. Anyway, Monday's Raw do, did a uh, 2.94 rating, average about 4, 4, 4, 4, million, 4.4 million viewers. So did ours at 2.91 to 2.97. Hey, at least they went up in the second hour. First time uh, since February 13th that the Raw dipped below 3.0. Second lowest rating uh, of the year behind the, the January 9th show, which was up against the National College football game. And Raw's um, Tinder TV social media score uh, was also way down uh, from about 36 percent. I'm not sure what the uh, 10 is T E T R trender trender. I guess that's their uh, what's trending. I guess hell I don't know. Dying hit. Hey, this week's episode of NXT is uh, from Hershey is going to be uh, taped uh, this Thursday from the Full Sail uh, University in Florida. That's where they're going to start taping from now on. Let's see how the atmosphere is there. Dean Ambrose defeated a local wrestler in a dark match before tonight's uh, WWE taping in Hershey. Uh, following uh, matches were also taped for NXT. Johnny Curtis uh, versus Percy Watson. Maxine versus Caitlin. Great Kali, Ezekiel Jackson taking on Rex and Hawkins. And Kid taking on uh, Michael McGillicuddy. And also uh, Derek Bateman, they're all taking this three-way. And in a rare move, WWE held a dark main event before the SmackDown taping began uh, in Hershey. The first match saw CM Punk ta uh, defeat Chris Jericho in an Anything Goes match. In the second match saw Orton, Sheamus, and Cena defeat Lord Tensai, uh, Kane, and Ziggler. I hope that's true. Barack Obama made history last night, uh, rather uh, last Wednesday, as the first United States president to openly support gay marriage. I didn't know it needs support it. I thought everything was vertical or horizontal, but uh, he spoke out on the matter on Tuesday in ABC's morning talk show, The View, which drew an elated response from TNA knockout Ma Mace, uh, Madison Reigns on Twitter. He says, Obama on The View discussing uh, the same-sex marriage rights. Awesome. Go Obama, Reigns said. I don't know if she's trying to tell us something or not, but I'd like to be over her house for a party sometime. Thanks for clicking, you guys. I think I got about everything taken care of here. I got a couple of things I'll hang on till tomorrow, so I gotta go.